today's video, this is part two of videos that are looking at muscle length assessment for the hip, knee, as well as the lumbosacral spine. So today we're going to be talking about two tests, that being Eli's as well as Ober's. And Ober's has two defined positions that we'll discuss. We're going to start in a sideline position and begin with Ober's. Now, Ober's has been defined and described as a test to really assess the topness or tightness of the IT band as well as the TFL. Ober's is specifically looking at more kind of TFL, whereas modified has the knee extended and is defined or described as looking more at the ITB. Now, the idea here is that you're getting an assessment of how tight those tissues are, and whether or not the thigh is able to drop beyond horizontal. With that said though, there's other contributing factors that you need to take into, or take into consideration that may limit that range of motion. And so we need to use this test with a, a little bit of scrutiny and recognize that we need to be careful in terms of how far we extrapolate our findings. So let's start with overs. To begin with, we need the individual to bend their lower leg back to about 90 degrees of, of knee flexion. That stabilizes them from rolling uh, either front or back. We're then going to also flex the next piece, uh, and that is the, the top knee or the evolved knee, and then use our elbow and our trunk to control uh, at the hip and ankle, or excuse me, at the foot and ankle. This hand is going to ensure that the hips do not roll back. In essence, we want the hips to be stacked vertically. If the hips roll back, it's going to be easier for them to gain some range of motion or flexibility. So at this point, we're going to make sure the hips stay stacked. So we're keeping the hips forward. We're going to abduct, and we're going to extend the hip to about 10 or 15 degrees of hip extension. At this point, we then allow the hip to passively drop. And if they can get to horizontal, the test is considered negative. If they are above horizontal, in this position, the test would be considered positive. Now, in this uh, position, you still want to maintain kind of control of the foot and ankle, but allow the hip to really relax. Now, if I let his hips roll back, look what happens. He's easily able to achieve that motion, and the reason being is he's now in hip flexion. Okay? So, that would be overs. Modified overs keeps the knee in an extended position and the steps are still the same. Abduct, extend, keeping the hips stacked, and then allow the hip to drop, All right? Now, with this, you're still looking to see if they get beyond horizontal. Again, the idea is that with the knee extended, you're taking the IT band and kind of ratcheting up the tension both distally as well as proximally. Okay, the next test that we're going to look at is ELIS, and ELIS is a muscle length test for the quadricep. However, there could also be a component of iliopsoas that's involved here as well. And so for this position, we need our patient to go into a prone position. And we're going to start by looking at the left side. Obviously, you would do this on both sides, but the individual is going to be in a prone position. We're going to flex the knee up, and then we're going to provide that overpressure as we do this. Now, if the rectus is tight, rectus femoris, one of the things that we're looking for is to see whether or not the hip will flex on our reference side, ipsilateral, same side. So in this position, you can kind of palpate the ASIS and see if that hip rises off the table as you bring the individual back. The test stops when you feel that, and then you can take a range of motion measurement at the knee to establish a norm reference to return to, such that you can kind of monitor and, and progress range of motion within the treatment plan. Additionally, you can also look at the pelvis and see if there's any anterior rotation that occurs as well. Uh, anterior rotation would be that anterior pelvic tilt, and so with anterior pelvic tilt, we also see kind of an increase in the lower dotic posture of the lumbar spine. And so you can also watch and observe that as well. So you have two tests here. You have overs in a sideline position with a modification to 
uh, in theory, kind of get more at the ITB. And then you have ELIs, which is looking at the quad length. Have a go with a peer or colleague and let me know if there's any questions.